Okay, today's lesson is 12-1, Estimating Limits Graphically. And um, the gist of this, y'all, is um, it's a basic concept that's really important for your success in calculus and and um, later math classes. So the really cool thing is that you, we did this kind of thing at the beginning of the year, so hopefully you're going to come back to it and see how easy it is, even though you might have thought it was hard way back in August. Okay, so first off, the concept of a limit, remember, is basically um, what's happening. Okay, we're looking at this point. If I have some function, y equals f of x, and here is a point they're saying at c, at x equal to c, what is the limit of the function? And we're looking at what that graph is doing as we get closer and closer to it from the right or from the left. And we say from the right, we're basically looking at the x values as they get closer and um, from the right and the x values as they get closer from the left. And we're zeroing in. So you're going to see that as we go along. And Okay, so let's look at this first one. Um, I went ahead and put the graph on there with the tables. You don't have to do the tables when you do your um, homework. Um, it's just a nice thing to know how to do is to look at some tables of numbers and see if you can figure out what that limit is. But easiest is, um, I think, definitely the graph. So first and foremost, find the limit as, and this is red, find the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 1 minus 5x. So I went ahead and graphed y equals 1 minus 5x. Okay, so I have this graph, and I'm looking for x equal to negative 3. So I'm going to go on my graph and find negative 3. Okay, I had to change the scale here to get it, but this is negative 1, negative 2. That right there is negative 3. And so I'm going up from that point, and then I'm going to go across and find out that the value of my function, okay, or you can see on both sides that it's getting closer and closer to whatever this number is that I went across on this line, okay? So you can count that way. Here is a table, okay? And I'm looking for x equal to negative 3. And I look at it from the left. And then I look at it from the right. And at the value of the function is 16. But you can see from these tables that's, that those numbers are getting closer to 16. And those numbers are getting closer to 16. So the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 1 minus 5x is 16. Okay, here's another graph. I put into the calculator y equals x squared minus 1. I'm looking at it from x equal to 1. So I'm looking at it from the left, okay? These are, I, which one? These are my x values from the left of 1. These are my x values from the right side of 1. These numbers are getting closer and closer to 0, and those numbers are getting closer and closer to to zero. So the limit as x approaches one of x squared minus one is zero. Okay. Sometimes y'all, one of the things that's so important about reviewing and doing problems over again, because sometimes it clicks when you do it um, the fifth or sixth time. Sometimes that's what it takes for me. Okay. So here, this is, remember what we've called, we studied these earlier. These are rational functions because they look like a ratio of two polynomials. Don't look like they actually are. Um, look like a fraction, fancy word for a fraction. Okay, so we're looking for the limit of this function as x approaches negative 2. So where's negative 2 on my graph? It's here. And from the left, these are the set of numbers that are coming from the left. That's from the right. Those are the numbers coming from the right. Again, getting closer and closer to negative 2. So what are these numbers? They're getting closer to negative 2 point, excuse me, negative 0. 0.2499 or negative 0. 0.25. So we say the limit of that function is negative 0. 0.25. Okay, here is another one. Now you can't see this on here. X, um, we're looking for the limit of this function as x approaches 5. There are not many graphs that are going to show that to you. Okay, let's see, whereas 5 is right here, and if I go across, it's going to be equal to 6. So if I look at the numbers as I get closer and closer to 5, okay, uh, and getting closer to 5, and these are from the right. So the first set of numbers was from the left, second set of numbers from the right, 
what are those numbers getting closer to? And you can see they're both getting closer to six. Um, that's the important thing. What you can't just to tell you, okay, you can't see it on this graph. You might be able to on some calculators if you zoom in, but there's actually a hole in the graph at that point. Okay. So what's happening here, okay, the limit, all right, just to kind of give you a, a basic concept of the limit, okay, we are looking at this limit. Sometimes the function itself is undefined, okay? That's the problem we were just dealing with. So if you look up here, okay, I kind of tried to highlight that hole, and that's what this is right here. There's actually a hole in the graph that we can't see. But the value of my function is undefined. Why is it undefined, y'all? Because you put 5 in here and you get 0 on the bottom. Cannot divide by 0, okay? Sometimes um, it's defined, okay? The function is the actual function is undefined at that point, or the graph is not continuous at that point. We talked about this way back in chapter one, but it actually jumps up to here. This is what we call jump discontinuity way back when, okay? And then, of course, we just have a smooth and continuous function where the limit's going to be equal to the value of the function at that point, okay? So what we do when we're evaluating, we look at what we call one-sided limits, okay? You have a left-handed limit, which is kind of what I was doing when I was showing you, and that is we look at the function as we approach that x value from the left, okay? And it is written like this. This is really important. That says x approaches c from the left. So when you see a negative, what looks like an exponent, that means that we are approaching the function from the left, okay? So what's it going to look like when we approach from the right? it's going to have C plus. So that's a really important notation that you've got to understand. So how do we know if the limit of a function exists at a point? Well, if the left-sided limit equals the right-sided limit, then we say the value of the, I mean, excuse me, the limit of the function is that number. So when, when these two are the same, then that's the limit of the function. So notice no exponent plus or minus on that C. That one means I'm coming from the right. That one means I'm coming from the left. So let's look at, and you're going to have to evaluate these. Okay. Oh, excuse me. The limit. So we have the limit as X approaches one from the left. The limit as X approaches one from the right. And then what is the limit? And remember, we're going to look at it and see these two have to be the same for this one to be, to exist. Period. Um, Okay, so one of the key things I want to show you that I think is really cool, been graphing, using graphing calculators for a long time, so a shout out to ClassCalc because they make graphing piecewise functions very easy. So I'm going to show you this. I put these two functions, so this is f of x, x cubed plus 2 if x is less than 1, 2x plus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1. So when I put those two functions into ClassCalc, Okay, if you want to do it, I tried to color code it the way of the graph, and I'll, I'll explain that in just a second. Okay, but you can hold your button down on here, and if you see, I have the ability, first of all, to change the colors, but to set the domain. Okay, and in my particular problem, what, what did it say? It said, I want um, this graph here for x less than 1. Okay, so I'm going to go put in, and I'm going to put a 1 right there, and if you notice, it took away, I should actually, let me click that one off. It'll be a little bit easier for you to see. And so it only graphed that part of the function. I just think that's really cool. Sorry. Okay. So then I'm going to put this one back and I'm going to go long hold on that. So if you're on a phone, just long press and I'm going to set my domain. And this one was greater than or equal to one. So you can clearly see how the functions, okay. You can zoom in or out, okay. And look at it. I tried to do the same thing. I color coded it because then you can actually see which function I'm talking about. So on this first one, I'm looking for the limit of the function as X approaches one from the left. So I highlighted the graph when I'm coming from the left. So where is that going? Okay. So you look at it, you do your best. It looks like, um, what is that number? Three. Okay. One, two, three. So it's an estimate. And I can probably see it better on my 
class calc. So it's going to three. The limit as X approaches um, one from the left is three. So the purple one is showing you that I'm tracing the graph from the right side. So that's kind of what I'm doing every one of these. So the limit as X approaches one from the right is three. Okay, these two numbers are the same. And so if those two numbers are the same, then we say the limit of the function as X approaches one is equal to three. Okay, look at this graph. Very, very interesting graph. And I kind of um, showed you, this is the value of X equals negative two. So here's my function. And they want to know the limit as X approaches negative two. So I showed negative two on the graph. This is going to be coming from the left. This is going to be coming from the right. So the limit as X approaches negative two from the left looks like it's negative. No, I'm excuse me, positive three. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. The limit as X approaches negative two from the right following the purple and that value is negative four. So these two are not the same. And if they're not the same, then we say the limit does not exist. Just like mean girls. Okay. But we get tired of writing does not exist. So we write D and E instead. So make sure you know what D and E stands for. Okay. Here's another one. Different type. Again, a rational function. I'm looking for the limit as X approaches three. So from the left, What's happening on my graph? You can tell that I'm going to negative infinity. From the right, when I trace the graph, I'm going to positive infinity. Do they come together to the same place? They do not, so we say the function does not exist. This one here, from the left, okay, from the right, am I going to the same place? Yes, I am. So the limit as x approaches zero of this function would be negative infinity. So the key is, and easy to do if you've got your fingers traced, and I can't do it so easy with the mouse, but if they're going in that same direction, then we're going to say. So we have, um, when you go back and look at these notes, lots of different examples. So that's what you're going to have on your um, homework. Okay, lots of different examples of graphs. I didn't finish that sentence. All right, so last few examples. The limit as x approaches zero of the sine of one over X. Okay. And I don't know if y'all can tell by looking at that, but basically my graph is going boing, 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 going back and forth is what we refer to as oscillating behavior. Okay. And when we have oscillating behavior and it's jumping back and forth, then the function does not exist. Okay. Um, this second one. Okay. The limit as X approaches zero of X squared sine of X. Okay. So I highlighted again from the left is in green and from the right is in purple. And I'm looking for it right at that spot. And it appears to me that those two graphs are coming together and they are getting closer and closer to zero. So the limit of this function as X approaches zero is zero. Okay. So just to wrap up, when do limits not exist? Okay. If it's not the same number, F, as f of x approaches a different value from the left and from the right, okay, then we do not have a limit. If it increases or decreases without bound from the left or right, not going in the same direction again. And the last one would be if it oscillates between two fixed values, which would be that last example. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me or set up a Google Meet. Thank you so much, and y'all have a great day. Bye.